For this video, you'll need to be able to calculate the area and circumference of a circle. If you want to revise that topic quickly first, I'll put a link to my video on it in this video's description. If we take a circle and then draw on a radius and then a second radius, this region here is known as a sector. There's also a sector on the other side here. If we take a sector, you can see it's made up from three lines. We've got this line here, which is a radius, this one here, which is also a radius, and this curved one here, which we call an arc. You can see that's the same for the other sector. We have a radius here and here, and a much bigger arc going around here. If we add some information onto this sector here, then we can calculate its sector area. To do this, we're going to first of all imagine that this sector wasn't a sector at all, and in fact it was a full circle, with the same radius, 8 centimeters. If we were to calculate the area of this circle, we would do pi times r squared, so pi times 8 squared. This would give us the area of the full circle, but we have a sector of the circle which is clearly lower. The question is how much of the circle do we have? Well a full turn contains 360 degrees. Our sector only has 70 degrees. So the fraction of the circle that we have here is 70 out of 360. So this is the fraction of the area that we need. So all we do is multiply the area of the circle formula, pi times 8 squared, by this fraction, 70 over 360. So to calculate the area of this sector, we would just type this into a calculator and it would give us this number here which if we round off to say one decimal place will be 39.1. Since it's area, its units will be centimeters squared. Let's try a second example of this. So for this sector, we're once again going to imagine first of all that it's a full circle with radius six centimeters. To do its area then, I do pi times six squared. But we don't have a full circle, we have a sector. So the fraction of the circle we have here is 100 out of 360. So we just multiply this by the area of the circle. Typing this into your calculator will give you this number here, which rounds off to 31.4, again centimeters squared. We're now ready to write down a more general formula for the area of a sector. This number here was the angle for the sector, and this number here was the radius. In maths we often use the symbol theta to represent an angle, and for the radius we'll use the letter r. Notice how this part here is just the area of the circle formula, and we're just multiplying it by the angle theta over 360. So more generally, the sector area formula is theta over 360 times pi times r squared. Now we also need to be able to calculate the length of the arc of a sector, which we call the arc length. Remember the arc is this curve line here, so we're interested to know how long that line is. You could think of an arc as being part of the circumference of the circle. So if I draw on this green dotted line here, this would be the whole circumference. I know how to calculate the whole circumference by doing pi multiplied by the diameter. For this circle, the radius is three centimeters, so the diameter will be double this at six. So to calculate the whole circumference, I would do pi times six. But we don't want the whole circumference, we only want this arc, which is part of the circumference of the circle. The question is how much? Well, just like before, a full turn has 360 degrees. Our sector has 87 degrees, so the fraction of the circumference that we want is 87 over 360. So we just multiply this by the formula for the circumference. If you type this into your calculator, you'll get this number here, which if we rounded off would give us 4.6. This time it's not area though, it's the length of the arc, so we'd measure it in centimeters rather than centimeters squared. So we found the length of the arc. We can generalize this formula too. The 87 was the angle for the sector, and this 6 here was the diameter this time, not the radius. So the 87 could be replaced with theta and the six can be replaced with D for diameter. Notice again that this is the formula for the circumference of the circle, we just multiply it by theta over 360. So more generally, the arc length formula is theta over 360 times pi times diameter. Let's practice using both of these formulas for another sector. So we have this sector here and we're going to calculate both the area and the arc length. So we'll start with the sector area and the formula is this, the angle for this sector is 225, so we'll replace theta with 225, and the radius is 9, so let's replace r with 9. You type this into your calculator and you'll get this number here, which if we round off will be 159.0 centimeters squared. For the arc length, we'll use this formula. The angle is once again 225, but the diameter is not 9, it's double 9, so 18. 
Type this into your calculator and you'll get this number here, which if we round off will be 35.3. The units this time centimeters, since it's a length. Now let's have a look at some more difficult problems. For this question we have a sector and we're asked to work out its perimeter. The perimeter is the sum of all of the sides of the sector. This sector has three sides. We've got this one here, which we know is 30, that's the radius. We have this radius over here as well, which must also be 30. And then we have this length here, which is the arc. So we actually know two of the lengths already, we just need to work out the length of the arc and then add them all together. So let's use the formula for the length of the arc. We need the angle theta, which is 53, and the diameter, which will be double 30, so 60. If you type this into your calculator, you'll get this number here. Now I'm not going to round this because it's not the end of the question. We've just found that the length of the arc is 27.75 and so on. To find the perimeter then, we just need to add together all three lengths of the sector. So we've got the arc, which is 27.75 and so on. We've got the first radius, which was 30, and the second radius, which was also 30. If you add all of these together, you'll get this number here. Now that we've finished the question and found the perimeter, we can round this to something sensible. If we did one decimal place, it would be 87.8, .8, and the unit centimeters, since it's still a length. In this next question, we're given a sector, and we're asked to work out the sector area, but we're asked to give our answer in terms of pi. So let's do the normal formula for the area of a sector. We've got the angle theta, which is 120, and the radius, which is 9. Now, because this is in terms of pi, we're probably not going to have a calculator handy, so we're going to need to work this out ourselves. If you look at this fraction here, 120 over 360, that fraction will simplify nicely, since 120 goes into 360. We could divide both of these by 120, and we'll get 1 over 3. Then we have times pi, and then times 9 squared, and 9 squared is 9 times 9, which is 81. Since we have three numbers multiplied together here, we could do this in any order. I like to put the pi on the right side and have the 81 in the middle. So we have 1 third times 81 times pi. Now you can do 1 third of 81 by doing 81 divided by 3, which will give you 27. So this is 27 times pi, or 27 pi. And that's the answer to the question. If we stick with this sector, then we could also work out its arc length, once again giving our answer in terms of pi. So again, no calculator for this question. So let's take the arc length formula. The angle is 120, and the diameter is double the radius, so double 9, which is 18. Once again, we can simplify this fraction. It will give us 1 over 3, then times pi, then times 18. Just like before, we can reorder these multiplications. So we have 1 third times 18 times pi. And to do 1 third of 18, we do 18 divided by 3, which is 6. So it's 6 times pi, or 6 pi. In these next two questions, we need to work backwards. So here we have a sector, and we're told the length of its arc is 3.5 centimeters, and we need to work out the value of x. You can see that x is the angle this time, so we haven't been told the angle, the angle is missing. Since it mentions arc length in this question, let's write out the arc length formula. We know that x is the angle this time, so let's replace theta with x, and we have the radius of the sector, that's 4, so the diameter will be 8. So normally we would just try and type this into the calculator, but that's not going to work since there's an x in there. But we are told that the arc length of the sector is 3.5. So if we were to type all of this into the calculator and we knew what x was, the answer must give us 3.5. What we end up with here is an equation that we need to solve to try and find the value of x. To do this, I'm going to rewrite the pi and 8 as fractions, by writing them over 1 since pi over 1 is the same as pi, and 8 over 1 is the same as 8. We can now multiply the fractions on the left-hand side of this equation. On the top, we have x multiplied by pi multiplied by 8, which is 8 pi x. On the bottom, 360 times 1 times 1 is just 360. And the right-hand side is equals 3.5. Next, we're going to multiply both sides by 360. On the left, this will cancel the 360, and we'll have multiplied by 360 on the right. Then we're going to divide both sides by 8 pi. On the left, the 8 pi will cancel, and on the right, we'll have divide by 8 pi. So we find that x is equal to 3.5 multiplied by 360 divided by 8 pi. You can now just type that into your calculator as it is here, and you'll get this number. This question said to round the answer to one decimal place, so we'd get 50.1. 
Since this is an angle, its units will be in degrees and not centimeters. Let's try another question in a similar style. So this time we have this sector here, and we're told the area of the sector is 66, and we need to work out the value of x again. This time x isn't the angle, it's the radius of the sector. Since we're told the area in the question, let's write out the formula for the area of a sector. Now this time we do know the angle, that's 136, but we don't know the radius, that's our x. So let's replace the r with an x. Since we're told in the question the area of the sector is 66, this must be equal to 66. Now we just have an equation to solve again. We're going to rewrite the pi and the x squared as fractions. So pi over 1 and x squared over 1. Now we can multiply the fractions on the left hand side. We have 136 multiplied by pi multiplied by x squared, which is 136 pi x squared. On the bottom, 360 times 1 times 1 is just 360. And on the right hand side, equals 66. Next we can multiply by 360 on both sides. On the left hand side, this 360 will cancel, so we have times 360 on the right hand side. Then we divide both sides by 136 pi. This will cancel the 136 pi on the left, but we have divide by 136 pi on the right. So we have x squared equals 66 times 360 divided by 136 pi. You can type the right hand side of this equation into your calculator, and you'll get this number here. So x squared is equal to 55.61 and so on. But we don't want x squared, we want x, in which case we have to square root both sides. If we square root the left hand side, we've just got x, and if we square root the right hand side, the square root of 55.61 and so on. You can type this into your calculator and you'll find the value of x is this. The question asked us to give this one to one decimal place, so it's 7.5. And since it's a length and the area was in centimeters squared, the length will be in centimeters. Thank you for watching this video, I hope you found it useful. Check out the one I think you should watch next, subscribe so you don't miss out on future videos, and why not try the exam questions in this video's description.